Hi there, I'm Cast Iron Katie. Today I'm going to make meatloaf and a vegetarian option of a lentil loaf along with some fingerling potatoes in my Dutch oven. Whenever you go camping, you have a variety of people that will be camping with you. You may not be vegetarian, I'm not vegetarian. I do enjoy vegetarian meals and the option of it but it's always good to be inclusive of other people, maybe the family down the street you're going camping with, they're vegetarian, you're not, you don't know what to cook for them. So this is an excellent option to include everybody in one meal. Um, I have some family members who are vegetarian and the older generations have a bit of confusion as to what do you eat? And my daughter-in-law describes it best, if it farts, we don't eat it. So. That's pretty much the basic rule. If it's made of fart, don't serve it to them. So, um, however, with the lentil loaf, they're gonna be farting a lot. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a gassy thing. You may wanna provide a gas bill or don't get too close to them the next day. So, let me show you the ingredients. I'm gonna start by combining the lentil loaf first and then I will move on to the meatloaf. So I've got it all prepared right here. Uh, you saw at the beginning how to make lentils if you choose not to use canned. Sometimes it's easier to find the dried ones. They're real easy to make, like I said, just like a dried bean. So I have two cups of lentils. And my seasoning is from the Good Eats recipe for meatloaf and it is breadcrumbs, chili powder, uh, cayenne, pepper, thyme, and black pepper, and kosher salt. So, put that in. And we omit some of the ingredients just because it's our preference. We have onion and garlic. We didn't put the pepper or the uh, or, and carrot in it. Um, the last ingredient to go in is an egg. Let me show you this thing. You have lots of these paper cartons. There's a little, just a little side note. Um, if you have these paper egg cartons, a good idea for campouts is to fill them up with dryer lint and pour your candle wax or your Scentsy wax over the top of it and it might take a month or more to fill it up and get it going but once you have the cups filled with dryer lint and then the wax poured over the top it's an excellent fire starter. Here um, at this particular campground they sell those fire starters for a couple bucks. I've seen them as much as four dollars each but make your own trash at your house. I'm using a potato masher to mash up the little and the breadcrumbs seasoning and vegetable. I use this potato masher a lot because you can't overdo with the mixing because it's just all elbow grease. Alright, starting to look kind of like what you might think of as a meatloaf base. Okay. Get ready to mix up the, the meatloaf one with the beef. I'm using grass-fed beef. It's only 7% fat so I'm gonna go ahead and spray the other pan too whenever I put it in. Same seasoning and breadcrumbs. I halved it, so um, that's just how I'm doing this particular set because the, the meatloaves are quite small. So I had half of the um, onion in one, half of the seasoning in one, and oh, that way you can just split it into two. 
you'll notice that the recipe calls for like 36 ounces of meat. We're just doing about a pound of each. Okay. Get this all mixed up. All right, we're gonna spray this pan because of the low fat content in the beef. it in the pan. Oops. Got a little left over that I'm going to try on the waffle iron, see what happens with that. Okay. We are going to cook this in the outdoor Dutch oven. Okay, you know that this is the outdoor Dutch oven because it has the pegs on the bottom and it has a lip or going around the lid. And the way I'm going to cook this is I have a little cooling rack and I'm going to place these pans in here using again the, the this has a oven instead of a vessel in some sense of it. I'm gonna use it as a cooking vessel for my potatoes though, but it worked out so nice in the other video. Um, whenever I made banana bread, go watch that, that I'm gonna do it again. So. I have seasoned these fingerling potatoes with a tablespoon of um, olive oil, teaspoon of kosher salt, teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper, and a, a teaspoon of garlic powder. Just stick them all around our meat loaves. If you don't have fingerling potatoes, you can always chop up regular potatoes. Okay. While I've been preparing this, I previously started the charcoal, so it is getting just about ready to go. So there's not gonna be a lot of wait time if you plan things out strategically like that. Ooh. these on top might get a little extra done. That's okay. Okay. Alright, let's take this over to the charcoal. Okay, now that we're over here at the hot coals, we're going to talk about safety like usual. Uh, in order to move the briquettes around, I have very long barbecue tongs so I don't get anywhere near hot coals. I have hot holders in case I need to touch the Dutch oven. I have my lid lifter so that I can move the Dutch oven in and out of the firing and also so I can use uh, the lid lifter as a lid lifter to check on the food and to rotate it. Oh, and I'm wearing my leather boots in case I drop a hot coal on my toe. Make sure that you wear closed-toed shoes. It's just a good idea when you're camping wear closed-toed shoes. This is supposed to bake at uh, 325 until the internal temperature of the meatloaf is 155. So I am, I'm gonna go ahead and try it at the temperature in the recipe and see what happens. There's a little bit of space there with that cooling rack upside down in there. So uh, I'm hoping it doesn't burn. So we're gonna take a shot. In order to get to 325, we're going to use the number on the lid as our reference number. 
This is a 10 inch Dutch oven. In the inside of it is 10 inches. And we will take 10 and subtract three to get seven. And that's how many will go on the bottom. Take 10 and add three and we'll get 13. And that's how many go on the top. I am kind of taking a gamble whenever I do the actual temperature, but I think that it'll be fine. And if I need to reduce the temperature, I will just use my nose and just try to stay aware of if it might be burning or not. And that you can always adjust the coals. It's kind of a sunny day too. So since it is so bright and sunny, um, that might affect the cooking temperature also. Your elevation might affect the cooking temperature. There's just all sorts of factors that go along with it. All right, now we'll do the 13 on the top. briquette here for my last one but I got some little pieces so we'll just kind of put these little pieces around okay in 10 minutes that's whenever we start basting it with the ketchup and cumin topping I, some people don't like putting ketchup on their meatloaf don't do it it's your meatloaf but I like it so we're gonna go mix that up while we're waiting 10 minutes and then we'll come back and baste it and rotate the Dutch oven. The ketchup topping is a half cup of ketchup, a teaspoon of cumin, a dash of hot sauce, and a dash of Worcestershire. It also calls for honey. I just never put the honey in it. And mix it up. And then we will use a basting brush to brush it on top of our both of our meatloaf and our lentil loaf. 10 minutes has passed and it is time to rotate the Dutch oven and also to put on the ketchup baste. You want to rotate your Dutch oven every 10, five to 10 minutes just so that you don't get hot spots from where the heat focuses too much on your food. Okay, and also have to take the lid off so we can put the ketchup on. I hear a bit of sizzling going on in there. Might need to start another set of coals in case these don't make it all the way through. Okay, we'll do lentil first. Put that ketchup on there so it has a chance to cook too. And now we'll do the meat side. get some another round of coals going so we can replace these and come back in 10 minutes check on things and rotate it our meatloaf potatoes and lentil loaf have been cooking for 50 minutes probably should have took it off at 40 minutes I did check the temperature and it exceeds the 155 definitely done. It looks really good. Let's take it over here. All right. Just a little bit. 
All right, let's check out these potatoes. Make sure they're done. They should definitely be done. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Okay. Let's check out this meatloaf. really good looks juicy uh, let's see about the lentil loaf oh, it feels good oh yeah look at that okay so we have meatloaf and lentil loaf Options for your vegetarian friends. Just replace the meat with lentils. Same amount, pretty much. Let's give this a taste. Aww. Let's try again. gonna want to do this on your next camp out it's, it's amazing um, you don't have to worry about social distancing whenever you eat the lentil loaf either mm -hmm. both of them perfect they're so good excuse me that was a big bite this is cast iron Katie thanks so much for watching